Maybe you can hear me without the microphone. I'll speak loudly. It's easier. Um, my involvement in this uh, project, uh, together with Almaria Baca and Dinigu, um, has been to take care of the fish experiments and the food chain experiments. Um, you know, uh, Norway is growing a lot of salmon, and we are looking for new ingredients for the salmon diets. Um, and uh, it's now difficult to get hold of GM-free varieties. Uh, so we need to do some experiments to investigate whether this could be uh, of any problem. Um, we did four experiments with fish to try to cover the whole uh, life cycle. One reproduction experiment that didn't go so well, we need to do that again. And three growth experiments. One experiment with a very little fish from they are born or hatched, um, and they live in freshwater, and then two experiments in salt water, a short term and a medium term experiment. And we used healthy fish, as well as fish which we had challenged with soybean in the diet, which caused a, a gastrointestinal problem. We have made thousands of observations, many, many. I won't mention all to you, but they are related to uh, the stomach and the gut function, which where, where the BT first, which we tested, uh, meets the, the fish. We looked at size, appearance, by, to the naked eye. We used a microscope to study the structure. We uh, studied function, <coughs> such as digestion, transport of nutrients across the intestinal wall, defense mechanisms against bacteria, virus, stress, etc., toxins. And we took, uh, investigated also liver, kidney, spleen, head kidney, which is an immunological organ. We looked at pancreas and reproductive organs. We also took blood samples. We are looking for possible markers that we easily can obtain, so the blood, if the blood could show us effects, that would be great. We looked at several uh, variables in the blood, uh, which could indicate liver function, <coughs> kidney function, etc. and general metabolism. Our conclusions <clears throat> regarding all these experiments that all fish were in general healthy and they grew well for most of all the thousand of observations we made. And we did not see any traces of uh, the, the Bt in the Bt maze such as protein uh, or antibodies against the Bt protein. They could have given us a, a, a biomarker that we are looking for, but we didn't find it in the blood. There were some indications that PTMAs represented a challenge to the gut. We found more gut tissue. We saw some enhanced immune responses for some of the immune responses uh, markers. We saw some enhancements in stress responses. The fish digested protein a little less well and converted, because of that, converted feed to flesh a little less efficiency, efficient. But otherwise, there were no differences in the responses to the Bt maze. <coughs> the, the data therefore suggests that the Bt protein or other biologically active component in the Bt maze have local growth and immune stimulating effects in the intestine of the salmon. And that had a cost for the, for the fish. However, since most observations were normal and overall growth performance and feed intake were not affected, <coughs> major health implications are not predicted from, based on our results in, the, in salmon. It is not uncommon to find that different diets, <coughs> diets that don't differ that much, uh, affect the intestine in particular differently. So, these findings in the gut are not alarming, really. So, GMO in the food chain. Why did we do this? The food chain means that we feed the fish, BT maize, and then we feed the, the flesh of the fish to rats, in this case, uh, representing us, maybe. Uh, there, have been, there are some indications showing that <coughs> genes from um, BT, uh, unique to BT maize, for example, can be found in blood, and also the proteins and antibodies against these proteins can be found in 
in the blood of animals that have eaten this. That means that there are components that can be transferred from, from the food, feed, to the body, and then maybe further on to the next level that's eating this. And the goal of our study was therefore to find out whether we can, could trace that in any way regarding health. We used rats. They were weaned and they were fed for 90 days, 10 rats per diet. Um, <clears throat> and again, <clears throat> they were also then fed mice directly, or flesh from salmon, or flesh from pig that Peter had uh, been growing. And we looked at the responses in the rat. All the rats were healthy and grew well. However, a little bit to our surprise, rats that were fed the diets related to the BT maize, whether maize directly or the flesh, they ate a little more, they grew a little more, and they were a little fatter. And the results also indicated mild modi modifying effects on the immune responses. So BT maize in the food chain, even after having been through a uh, salmon, it seemed as if we got responses in, in, in the rats. However, for all these values we had, they were within the normal ranges. So values that we would expect to see in healthy animals. So as a nutritionist, I can always ask these increases in, in weight that we saw, if this goes on for long, will they be really fat? And if we eat, but that's, uh, we shouldn't speculate too much on that. This is just one experiment and um, as I mentioned earlier, it's not so uncommon to see small differences between quite similar diets. Um, biomarkers is a great focus for, for us, as I said, and uh, if, if I su 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 suggest a biomarker, where to search for biomarkers, it would be related to the intestine. Thank you.